Hi, I'm Kurt Clore, and this is Michael White, and we're both from Automatic Irrigation. We're here today to talk about how to program the Rainbird ESP LX series controller. The LX series controller is a modular controller. In the conventional wiring version, it's, it is set for either anywhere from 8 to 48 stations. And in the decoder version, which is what I have here, you can do anywhere from 50 to 200 stations. <clears throat> it's a relatively easy, simple programming, very similar to the ESP ME clock. It has a dial you turn to whatever position that you want to make a change. And then you use these four switches or four buttons here um, based on what comes on the screen to make your adjustments. <clears throat> this controller is also capable of running four station or four programs. And you switch with the toggle switch when you want to change values in different programs. So right now I have it set in A. <clears throat> the basic needs for setting up a watering system are all in the blue area of this controller, of the faceplate. So you're setting the date and time. <coughs> you are setting station or watering start time to tell it when to start. You can set and turn off any of your days of the week to tell it which days to run. And you set your station run times here so it knows how long to run each station. Now the left half of the dial is a little more advanced features. All right, let's talk about the left side of the dial. Uh, the first thing there is the seasonal adjust. Um, this is a great feature, the seasonal adjust, so let's say we're going into the springtime and uh, the programming is in there from last year and the rotors are set up for 30 minutes and maybe the sprays are set for 10 minutes and you don't quite want to water that much but you don't want to go through and change maybe 20 or 30 zones. So you could just use the seasonal adjust and say I want to run 50% or 70% of what's already programmed in there. You get on into the heat of the summer and you would raise this up to maybe 125% or 150%, 200%. This actually goes from 1% to 300%. A couple of ways this can be done. It can be done by program, and it can also be done by month. So if this controller doesn't get visited very often for, for any kind of adjustments, you can say, I know it's gonna be hotter in June, July, and August. I wanna run 120%. I know that right now, early in the year when I'm setting the controller up. And you can set the uh, other months, uh, spring and fall, a little bit less. Uh, let's talk about the uh, delay watering. Uh, so let's say if we've had a rain event this morning, for example, uh, you could go in here and say, uh, I don't want this to run for maybe three more days. We've had enough, enough water this morning. So you can choose from one up to 14 days delay before the system would run again. And once again, at that point, it would pick up and run automatically. You can also choose calendar days off. Let's say, for example, it's a couple of weeks away from 4th of July, you know, you've got a big event going on or a party or event at a campus. Uh, you can go in there and say, don't run 4th of July. Pick that day and it will not run, uh, regardless of what the schedule is in there, just for that day. Um, and you also can go in here and set up a water window, uh, the actual times that you want this controller to water, because there are some programming options based on flow and some other things that, that may uh, pick outside some times you want the system running. So you can control the water window. Uh, also, station settings. You have the opportunity to set up cycle and soak. Cycle and soak is a feature that says, okay, we know in Indiana, for example, we have very tight clay soils. You can't water for 20 or 30 minutes at a time because it'll be running down the street, across the curb, and down the drain. So you say, okay, I never want station one, and you can do this by station. You want station one to never run more than 10 minutes. And then you can tell how long to soak. And what'll happen is it, it'll run it for 10 minutes. It'll wait till the end of the cycle, which might be an hour or an hour and a half, but you can tell it I want it to be a minimum of a certain amount of time, maybe 30 minutes. Then it'll go back and run that, that zone again. And if for some reason it needs to be a third time, it will wait the amount of soak time you've programmed, okay? The other thing is there's also a station delay. So maybe you have a, a low pressure system or on a well or something, and you wanna make sure when zone one closes, zone two isn't trying to open, and there's not enough water to, to make these valves function properly. So you can set the delay and open that up so make sure one's gonna get closed before two tries to open. Let's talk about simul stations. Um, these controllers um, are powerful enough, and when I say powerful, electricity-wise, you have to make sure the system has enough water, but you can run simul stations. So you can say in this controller when it's operating, and maybe we're only using one program, I can run up to four valves at a time. Or you can say this program is using, or this controller is using three programs concurrently. You could say, let zone one use two valves, let zone two use two valves, and now we're back up to the four valves that we need. So you can program, program this controller to run, to run simul or more than one station, if you will. 
And you also have station sequencing uh, opportunities here uh, because these will run numerically. Uh, but for some reason, if they're wired and, and so forth, and you always want a priority to be zone six through eight to run the first thing in the morning when they can because you want that area dry because someone's out there working in the garden in the morning or something, um, you can actually give those stations a higher priority. There's actually a low, medium, and high, and it will water the high priority first, then it will water the medium, and it will water the low. But it, that would take it out of a numerical sequence. So. That's some of those features. Kurt, I'll turn it back to you. Some of the other special features that this controller offers is a flow module and some central control options. With the flow module, uh, this pro it has a program that's called Flow Manager, which allows you to enter a theoretical flow value for each of your stations, even if you don't have a flow sensor out there. Then you can tell it how much total flow you want to run at one time, and it will calculate the most efficient way to run your system based on not only your flow values, but also the priorities that Michael talked about. It also has what's called Flow Watch. So if you have a flow sensor um, hooked into your system, Flow Watch will use this flow sensor to learn flow for each of the stations, and then it can shut down the system if it senses there's a high flow or a low flow issue and make sure you're not wasting water or burning up a pump. It also, this controller has the ability to hook up to a central control system. It works through the IQ system. It's a simple cartridge that plugs into the inside. Some programming you do here on the, on the dial, and now you have access to your your, uh, your controller here through a computer uh, in your office or, or wherever you want. Let's talk about the, um, the LED light, if you will, that's right underneath the uh, four touchpad buttons there. Uh, that's an alarm light. And, and this alarm light will tell you whether you have a programming issue or whether you have an electrical issue. Um, this one's a little more sophisticated than some of the other controllers. When you have this in the automatic position and there is a, um, an error there and you see the light is on, you push the button, the alarm button, if you will, underneath where it says alarm, and it will tell you, it will list out that you either have a programming error that you need to correct, or you may have an electrical issue. And if you do, the electrical issue will tell you what zone that is and where you should go do some research to take care of the problem. Okay? Well, that uh, covers about all the basics for the LX controller. If you have any more in-depth questions, please give us a call at Automatic Irrigation. Thank you.